The world of offshore cruising is a demanding one, and the crew from SB Prism is here to show you how their favorite products perform. Non-biased reviews from real cruisers. That's what Prism Reviews is all about. All right, well, I hope you can hear me okay, but we're on the bow of Prism up here with the new Kingston Quickset QS50 anchor. We're here in lovely, but currently gloomy and slightly rainy um, Port Washington, New York. Uh, it was quite nice this earlier today when we were planning on doing this, but we had to go get some water and we did a walk. And by the time it's, you know, now it's 3.30 and we have a little bit of weather coming through. So uh, it's good test time for the anchor. Should be noted that we tried this anchor once before back in um, Bell Haven, North Carolina. Really muddy bottom, notoriously, according to the chart and other reviews, notoriously hard bottom to get a hold in. We could not get it to get a secure uh, set, in the meaning that uh, once I, she would set almost immediately, but when I really loaded up, uh, backing her down, um, we tried it three different times. Uh, two of them, I could, again, set and then reset very rapidly, but just wouldn't get a solid bite in the bottom to the point where it would stop the boat at full RPM in reverse. Uh, uh, one of those three tries, um, it did stop the boat um, almost immediately, uh, all the way full RPM, but I did a shock load, which I'm gonna do today again too, which means I'm gonna drive up onto the anchor, uh, almost right above it, uh, so I'm pulling the scope all the way up above the anchor, and then I'm gonna drive back down at about two or three knots in reverse and make that not only it stop the boat, but stop it abruptly when I feel like I have a really good bite. That, that's about the most extreme way I can increase a ton of load on this anchor setup without having a specialty setup. I don't know what the values are gonna be. Um, I, I don't know, we're just gonna have to kind of guess. Uh, Prism's 25,000 pounds and we're gonna go be trying to, if she's gonna bite at all, we're gonna be going from two knots to a complete stop very abruptly with a very short snubber. So uh, if there's better mathematicians out there than me, you can probably maybe figure that out. Um, but this is gonna be a good test because in this same anchorage in Manasot Bay, uh, the spade even struggled to set um, to the point where it drug, I don't even, I, I don't know if I'm gonna consider it dragging, but it, it it bit almost immediately, but when I, again, increased the RPMs in this really soft mud, we kept moving back at a steady rate until it finally dug all the way in and it stopped the boat. But that took about 20 or 30 feet. And it, again, that's not terribly standard for the spade to do that. Um, again, we've learned that this real, real uh, icky mud is the hardest substrate for these anchors to perform, um, at least these type of anchors. Um, I know fortresses and stuff like that are going to do great but they don't do great at resetting we need to be able to have an anchor that's on our bow that if we're not on the boat and a big thunderstorm comes in from a totally different direction and blows us the other direction we got to make sure that thing sets in the other direction and a lot of times the bays aren't as big as this one where it gives you a lot less room for that to actually happen so it's not really very helpful if it takes a quarter mile for this thing to reset uh, it needs to reset immediately or better yet never disengage the bottom at all so we're gonna try this out today. It should also be noted that this anchor's only gone in the water once. It has been living on the front of our boat for the last about three weeks though. And this front of the boat gets very salty. It's, it's where the bow wake is. And it's also where we wash down the other, the main anchor, the primary anchor. So it's constantly getting covered in salt water. And it's a, a kind of an oxidizing nightmare for any anchor. And it should be noted, even though this is stainless steel, there are already signs of corrosion happening on any of the hard edges. So along the bottom and along uh, where the back of the shank is right here, uh, I'm gonna get some close-ups right now, but there are some signs of at least surface corrosion happening. Again, this is 304L. It's kind of be expected that this is going to do this, but um, I'm kind of surprised it's doing that this quickly and especially because we're having a lot of rainstorms flushing the salt water off i didn't think it was going to happen this fast i don't generally 
<laughs> drop the anchor like that, but uh, I had to get it on. So Janet's gonna slowly pay it. She's gonna slowly back up while I pay this out. We're in about how many feet? How many feet of water? 17 feet. Neutral. That's 50. And again, this anchor seems to really do a good job at setting immediately. The problem has been to keep it set. <laughs> like right there, she's, she's already bit into the bottom. And I wish I could put a hammer on this, but I just don't think the water's clear enough to see anything. There's 100 feet right there. So I'm just gonna actually, I think just gonna let this do its thing. I'm gonna not worry about, let's just see how well it does on this initial set. So go ahead and put it in reverse, Shani. And I have moorings in um, uh, all over the place here. So they're really good uh, tells to see if we're dragging or not. Oh, there we go. Well, I'll tell you what, she set almost immediately there and she is not moving either. Bring it up. All right, neutral. What did we get up to there? Okay, well that's pretty, that's, that's actually excellent. That, that's, so far that has beat the spade in this exact substrate. The spade did not set that well that quickly. And you can, that's all been in real time too. So you can see that we didn't do any funny business there. That was legitimate, all one take in the water, paint it out like we normally would. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a shock load. So we have about 100 feet out now, it's a little bit more, but um, we can bring that in a little bit because the boat's gonna spring now up again because we were pulling on it so hard. I'm gonna put this bigger bridle on because uh, this is much stronger than the smaller one. And then uh, we are gonna drive up a little bit over it and then we're gonna come back with some force uh, and try to blow it out if we can. So uh, I'm gonna require Shannon's help for that though. Sadly, it's a two-person job because um, we just have a chain hook on the forward bow here and not a one that kind of clips onto the, the chain. So it's hard to do it with one person. We actually have a Mantis chain hook to replace this with. We just haven't yet to do it. Um, she said immediately. I mean, that was better than the spade yeah. thus far, unless she caught something. <laughs> caught on our wire. Uh, so you can kind of see us how we, we're going to do this. There you go. It's on. Yep, let out. Good. With a little bit of luck, it stays in like that. I don't know how that actually works, but it does. 99% um, of the time, we get it right. We're getting better at it. It's, we got a little rusty there at first. We're going to do a shock load now of um of the anchor really good initial set i mean that was actually freaky good um as good as i would say any modern anchor i'd call it uh but let's see if it will hold and in really soft mud like we're in because we know it's soft mud that's very difficult for anchors to do that don't dive they need to dive into the stronger stuff not just the really gooey stuff on the top so let's see how it goes all right channing sd card error that's not good well, we lost the we lost the GoPro, but I could probably just take this one off. Get it up. Go over. Oh, go ahead now. One of these. Repeat. Yeah. You were almost as far as one. We're gonna see if she stops. Oh. I think we're dragging her. Oh, there she goes. You're pulling hard. 
Is she stopping us? Is she stopping us? Is she stopping us? She's trying to stop us. She's trying to stop us. She's still moving though. Shannon thinks we're stopped, but we're not stopped. We're doing what we're doing with the what we were doing with the spade. We were just creeping back slowly. But she probably should stop here any moment here. She's still creeping though. There's a lot of force to put on the anchor. And and especially because we have not yet uh, gave her time to kind of settle. This is immediately into that initial set. So we, we have stopped. We have stopped, okay. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take reference of the, uh, the t um, house right there and that mooring. And they're almost lined up and we're gonna see if we're gonna do one more shock load and see if we can, if we're gonna hit that again, exactly. So we're gonna do that again. So again, we are looking at, there's a house right there with a mooring off of it. Moorings are great. No, sorry. Um, she's like, you want me to go that way? No. Straight up. Moorings are great because they don't move. They're basically straight up anchored. They shouldn't move at least. They're straight up though from where they, they, they stay put basically. So that's gonna be a great point of view. And I'm, that gives me a good actually idea too of how far to go up too. Because we are pulling over the anchor again. That's good, Shan. All right, whenever you want to. around oh yeah here we go here we go pretty aggressive we should stop any moment here it should become tight there it is oh definitely blew her out definitely blew her out oh yeah you, you could feel it Telling you right now, I, we're not lined up with the, the mooring. We're still moving back. We're not stopping. Yeah, I'm looking just fine. So again, that's an that's a extraordinarily hard test to do, but it, it also shows, it's an extreme test I understand. And, and the, the, what's gonna be interesting is if the spade can pass it too, because if the spade can't pass it either, then it's kind of a whatever. But uh, that probably is putting, I'm guessing, around a thousand pounds of pressure on it. I don't know. I, I wish I had the stuff to do that, but I just don't know. I have to kind of guess. And again, we could probably do a little bit of math here and figure out what it takes to stop a boat at two or three knots uh, in reverse that weighs this amount. Um, with that much of scope out, but I don't know. Uh, I'm guessing it's around a thousand pounds, just judging by what other boats of this size and this power um, can provide. Maybe it's more. Um, so we're gonna pull this up and we're gonna put the spade back on because to me, an anchor should be able to do that though. If, if we're gone here and I mean, uh, a 50 knot gust from a, or wind from a thunderstorm in this area is not unheard of. And so if we're not on the boat and one of those freak thunderstorms come through, it needs to be able to hold that without us dragging into, you know, everybody else back there. Um, what would be interesting to see is uh, if it, it, again, we weren't just skipping along the bottom there either. We were still engaged, but just not engaged in that really strong substrate that we're looking for. We want the substrate that holds not just plow lets the anchor plow through and that is the inherent issue with plow type anchors is and even other anchors too even the uh, concave anchors like the rockna and um, other anchors that just don't do a very good job at diving um, they especially when they get packed up in their roll bars is they tend to just kind of like cruise through that soft stuff and never get down to the deep stuff 
And this is how this is the type of testing I put the spade through before I ever trusted it. So this is no different. So I'm trying to find my moorings now way up here. So we've drug back, I'm not kidding, probably about a hundred feet. So again, if there was a dock behind us, that would have been no good. So let's see if she stops us again. We're still moving. I can feel her pull. So she's, I don't think she's biting. No. No, she's not resetting. Which is really odd to me. I, I feel like this type of anchor, even if it blows out, should immediately reset. Like the Sarka XLs, according on Steve's reviews and stuff like that, they are usually very good at blowing out and then returning, if they do blow out, if he puts enough load on them, blowing out and then immediately biting back in and setting again to a very high number. Where we are witnessing here is we've got it, probably a very high number we got it to blow out at, but uh, she's not resetting. Uh, even with just, what is that, Shan? Not even high RPMs, right? That was just, it's only 1100 RPM. So not very high, not a lot of load and she's not resetting. We're just cruising, we're just plowing at this point, which is odd. You. I, you would think that this kind of design, if it bit once, it would bite again the moment it blew out because it's just the design, it's inherent to the design, but it's not exactly playing to the rules. So I'm gonna pull up the anchor now. We're gonna put the spade back on. Again, not terribly convincing for me because it's gotta pass this test and we're gonna now put the spade through this, the same test and see how it does. And if the spade can pull it off, then then we know the spade's a better anchor in this substrate. If it can't, then you know this is a really hard substrate to do and we'd need a whole different type of anchor. So let's try that out. see or I don't know how much of this is it again mud on impacted in the links means it dove really well that first time but how I mean again it's really freaking soft mud so it's hard to say all right we're at the surface that's the thing too without having video of the anchor setting you just don't know if it's you know hitting something weird so it's hard to say that sure is a beautiful anchor though when it comes out. <laughs> I won't deny that. Now it's the fun part of freaking retrieving this thing at over the bowsprit, which I think is easier than most boats, but still it's kind of a pain in the ass. So, preemptively speaking, I had the spade ready to go, uh, knowing that this might not be uh, easy for this anchor to um, excel in this area. Stop, stop. Yeah, don't, don't, you're gonna get on the front end of that. Yeah, it, um, we have bark or something on it. Like maybe we hit a tree down there? That's like wood. I don't know if you can see that. Is the GoPro still on? Yeah, it, it, maybe we caught a piece of wood? I'm not quite sure, but... Um, that, that, that was stuck around the shank. <sighs> Again, without being able to record down there, it's really kind of just having to guess whether, but that's the reality of cruising too, is um, you can't always see what the hell you're anchoring on. So you have to have an anchor that kind of have to deal with a lot of unknowns and, um, and thus far, the spade's always kind of done that really well. So let's get the spade on now. I know I made that look real easy. I don't think a lot of people anchor around here. At least not, you know, like we do, where we just have to leave the boat. For day hook, that would be fine, you know what I mean, in, in most conditions. And if you drag, you drag, you know what I mean? Like, it's, you're, you're on the boat to take care of it. But, yeah, if you're in the city... You don't want that because then 
you might come back and your boat has drug into someone else or even worse on the shore where you have to then deal with if it gets stuck there you have to deal with getting it off i mean i've never had to do that but god forbid you have to do that now everything's kind of slippery with this really icky and very slippery mud i mean it is like it's like oil almost people that have anchored here will know what i'm talking about and I've, I've actually dealt with this kind of stuff before too like in the bay area this is very reminiscent of san francisco bay so i'm gonna put that right here i'm gonna grab the anchor and hopefully don't drop it on the boat yeah i like this better That hit me perfect. <laughs> oh, man, that was cold. Fifty feet. Try to straighten her up a little bit. Damn thing. All we're doing is. Neutral! Did not get that chain hook like I liked it. It's all fucking cattywampus. My hands are full! Well, you're better at this than I am. Like I said, we're both very rusty on different positions. We are not normally at these stations together. Come forward a little bit for me and my, my bridle's all jimmy jacked. All right, so 100 feet's right there. We're gonna get that down at water level. That's good, neutral. There you go. 100 feet's now at water level, which is where we want it. Thing where I want it to be, too. All right, slow reverse. Okay, using now, we're a little further back than we were last time, so hopefully it sets <laughs> immediately. Um, using our moorings as our waypoints if we're dragging or not. That looks really good, okay. Bring it up, bring it up. So we're moving still. Very similar to the other anchor too. At a pretty fairly fast pace too. This is kind of how we came in here too. Uh, she's moving just as fast as the other anchor. Slowly down. Give it a second. Neutral. That felt good. This is a hard, and I say hard, this is a difficult uh, substrate bottom to, to be confident in, honestly. Like this is one of the harder ones that we've done. Um, not only is the spade struggling just as much as the quick set is, is it's, I would say even worse in some certain ways because that, at least the quick set set initially, that hasn't yet to even bite at all. I'm hoping that last bite I felt is a real bite and not just a fake bite. We're just cutting through the bottom until we catch something harder, <laughs> I think. All right, neutral. So there's two options to do here now. Uh, and I'm gonna do option one is we're gonna pull the anchor back up, as shitty as that is, but we're gonna pull the anchor back up and I'm gonna go with like 10 to one. Uh, that's the only real uh, game, you know, thing left in our book of plays is um, really increase the scope with the ideas of hopefully driving that chain down further so the pole is less vertical or uh, upright and more down because the weight of the chain itself will pull the shank hopefully down in the mud so it dives harder. But uh, that's something I didn't do for the Kingston. I probably should have done it uh, just to give it 
more help. But I really thought the spade was just going to grab immediately and you know, <laughs> this deep root, uh, you know, make make it look really bad on the Kingston. But right now, actually, it's about equal. I'd say, uh, if not, maybe even a slight edge to the Kingston because the Kingston at least was biting into something and stopping us uh, fairly quickly uh, on both on both anchors, on both sets, uh, where this is not biting really at all. This is just, blah, blah, blah. it's just, we're just kind of cruising back. So, and you're just gonna have to take my word for it um, that we're, that's happening. We've now, we've come back probably another 100 feet since we've sat the, set the hook down. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring this up, because I do trust the spade more than the Kingston, because I just have more experience with the, uh, with the spade. So I'm gonna try to make this work so we can go to sleep tonight, because I just don't have all day to dick around with this either. So let's, let's bring it up. We just pulled up the spade after trying to reset or set it, and it wasn't setting. Uh, here's the issues here. We have, it looks like we definitely have a, uh, looks like a shirt stuck on the uh, fluke of the, of the anchor. Um, also, our, we have a binded, a bound shackle, which, try to get a better shot of it up here, but you can see my Crosby shackle which it's designed should be fine for this anchor never actually seen this happen before on this anchor but it is bound it's totally bound which is not good not only for it's not going to set usually at all if that happens and it really i believe puts a really crap load on that shackle to make it much weaker than it should be so that's a bummer to see that it does that with this uh with this anchor um, we've been using the mantis swivel for a long time and uh, I've never seen that happen with the Mantis because it has a massive shackle on the Mantis swivel. But that, uh, my friends, is not something you want to see. So let's uh, fix that and hopefully on our next reset it doesn't do that. And, um, and let's see if it sets any better because that probably had a huge part in it not setting nicely. I not only got the... It's not the seizing wire that broke, it's the... Um, <laughs> I caught something else. It's another inherent issue of dragging your anchor across the damn anchorage is you catch random other shit. What other shit did we catch? I think it's a t-shirt that was on a coat hanger. I think that's a coat hanger and that's a t-shirt. You want a new shirt, right? Definitely. Let's see what, let's see what we got here. Or it's a piece of plastic. I'm not quite sure. It's a piece of plastic. It's a plastic bag. Ooh, yummy. Oh yeah. Can you get me another plastic bag to put this plastic bag in? Anchor's just about, she, the shank's right at the top, the shackle's right at the water line right now. We're gonna do 150 because I'm tired of doing this right now and we're gonna make sure this damn thing sets. So good. And honestly, this anchor is so big, there's really no reason we don't shouldn't have just a higher than normal scope because we're learning that the bottom is quite a bitch. So we should just keep more than enough scope. As Lynn, Lynn Party says, it doesn't do you any good if it's in the locker. There's 150. So 150 at the water line. I have no idea what depth we're in anymore. That should be an ample. All right, reverse. Watching the moorings. Feels good. I think she did dive immediately at that point. I don't see her moving. Uh, she's not moving at all. She, she bit it immediately. That's good. So neutral. We're gonna put the big bridle on now. Big bridle's out, little bridle's still on. Bring it up. No movement. 
that 1500 that is okay that's a good sign okay neutral so we're gonna do a shock load test on the spade now kind of a moment of truth to see really if uh this thing beats the kingston and it's in the same substrate all right reverse full, full rpm this is about the most as we can do on this She's going in reverse now at our full RPM, which is about 1800 RPM, which I'm guessing we're gonna be moving here fairly quick here. It's a good test of everything too. <laughs> here we go. I'm kind of low, she's getting a little squirrely. There it comes. I'm gonna bite any moment here. She's kind of doing a veering test. Where are you going? Whoa, look at that, look at the strain. All right, so. Let's see if you can keep it centered. We're gonna try it. Again, I am usually the one at the helm, so uh, it's nothing against Shannon. And not, she's usually one of the, we're very good at what we do, but we switch places for this, uh, for this testing. So, I was able to keep her straight when we were testing the kicks yep. in. For whatever reason, that last time, she just wanted to go that way. That's all good. So I'm trying to come about 50 feet up on the anchor here. And the, a big trick of going straight back on this boat is starting uh, when you want to try to go straight back is getting the nose as close to directly in the wind as possible. I did do that. I, and not, I'm just talking to camera too. Um, and I then I'm just, these are your ways. I'm checking it. off the things that I also do. All right, so I feel like we've come to a complete stop. I'm gonna throw it in reverse now, and I'm gonna immediately give it some feedback into, yeah, no, she's, do. See, where are you going, John? Oh, I'm going the wrong way, that's why. I wanna go to port. I knew I was... that you were off to starboard, but I wasn't gonna say anything. Not giving up on this anchor right now. Full ponies back. Here she comes. Whoa, yeah, baby. Have we continued moving? No, we did not. We are holding true with that mooring to that little white, um, like boat locker thing. So there you go, guys. That's I know. That's it. We're good. We're set. High five. Yeah. All right. Thank God you're done. Jesus Christ. That's about. It took about two and a half hours to do what we just did. And it's probably gonna be like a 10 minute video. But um, what are your thoughts, Shannon? Get in here. I don't uh, know if we're my, your friend My thoughts at all. are, uh, I have no interest in- um, Testing anchors for a living? Anchor testing business, yeah, that. Uh, especially on this type of boat. Maybe on like a little skiff, like what's his face does, but no. In fact, I'm pissed because now we've missed out on my pizza time. And this and that. Pizza, we're selling pizza. I'm having pizza right now. Oh, you're having pizza right now? We're going for pizza right after oh, this. Are we? We're set. We're not. We're not moving. We're not dragging. So we can. We can definitely uh, do that. All right. So that's it, guys. Um, I'm gonna do a kind of a recap here, and uh, I'll let Shannon get ready for some pizza. I'm gonna probably need to rinse off because I'm filthy. What to take away from all this? Um, again, this is just the first test of maybe a few more if uh, Shannon won't leave me in the process, but. Um, Basically, what I'm trying to show here, and not really show, but trying to test, is uh, in areas that the spade has difficulty with, will this anchor do as good, if not better? And I know some people might get all up in arms that I'm not being ter terribly scientific about this. I never said I was a scientist either. Uh, I'm using this just as I would use this if I was cruising, which means I'm going to set the anchor like I would set the anchor like I was cruising with this anchor, which means I'm just gonna back down on it to full RPM. Um, and then I'm trying to simulate a, a pull on it that is like a worst case scenario that I can at least, the best pull I can do to uh, recreate a worst case scenario situation. Um, it's hard to say how well I'm doing to do that, but that's the way I'm doing it with that shock load is about the best thing I can think of. Um, and what that's showing to us is that this anchor did fine, actually did quite well in the initial set. And generally speaking, I would usually call it that good and like said, let's go to shore and, you know, party. If that was, again, that's how I normally 
set the spade and it's never failed me to this day. And uh, doing that shock load, it, it's hard to say whether it would have passed that if we had a little more scope out. I gave the spade a lot more scope at the, that last test. Um, so it's kind of unfair comparison, but I'm, again, you have to also, uh, we had a issue with the spade there with that, that fouling issue with that piece of plastic, which can happen to any of it. This might've had the same issue. And also that shackle issue too, which I have a feeling that was the case from the get go. Cause that thing was not setting at all. That, that was a terrible set by the spade. It was a zero points on that. And then when we fixed those two things and then increased the scope, I mean, it set immediately and held even the big shock load. So I probably should, while this thing was connected, done this at a higher scope. Uh, but again, this is the problem when you're not being terribly scientific about things. You don't think about those things until hindsight. So next time I will absolutely do that. If I have another issue with getting this thing to set, I will increase the scope to see if at, cer at a certain scope do we get to a point where this thing can set reliably and hold reliably in, in the best, um, you know, the worst, or should, the worst conditions I can throw at it. I have a feeling that this anchor would just really be great in sand, uh, like where we normally cruise 99% of the time, this anchor probably would be bitching. I'm, I have a feeling that it, that's the case. I mean, it, it, it has everything, in, it has all the right things in its formula to be a really great sand anchor, but this really soft mud is a hard thing to do. And we're proving that with one of the best anchors in the world um, that, it, that even the spade struggles with it. And again, I, should, I need to test this next time we do, when we go do this again, is the spade has a really bad tendency though of mud fouling if it pulls out. And that means is if, if it rips out of the bottom for any reason, but usually like if it has, if it has like a 180 degree switch, um, because of the concave design, it ten, has a tendency of its, it, because the way it's pulled itself into the ground, it's compacted all that mud and dirt on that spoon basically on on the fluke and it basically turns into a giant bubble of mud at that point and it will not reset it just becomes a very heavy mushroom down there basically and it will just drag never resetting and i mean that that is the scariest part about that anchor to me is that if it does disengage with the bottom it can be it turns it into a completely useless something um, and I like the idea behind the plows is they have, they generally don't mud foul. I mean, I don't think they do. I mean, I, that's a very uncommon thing. I'd be surprised if anyone says they do or known for that, but the CQR, the deltas, they are notorious for, for not mud fouling, which gives me hope that if this thing does blow out of the bottom on a soft mud like this, that it's going to uh, try to at least re-engage. Now, what we did there back there is that we blew it out of the bottom and then it wasn't wanting to set again like it did initially, which again, I don't know the answer to that. Um, what I'm trying to say in, the, in favor of these plow types is that they should re-engage almost immediately. And the, the kind of the hot anchor on the internet is the Sarka Excel. And there is proof of that doing exactly that. If, if you can make that one of those things blow out, it almost immediately resets. Um, which is a really great um, quality to have in an anchor that y the last thing you want to do is something that just doesn't reset. When we're comparing apples to apples, these anchors, the spade and this are fairly close in size. They're, this is a 50, that's a 55. Um, and we're, we're basically throwing the same things at them. Again, I should have, I mean, I'm kicking myself right now that I, I didn't try that again with a higher uh, or a longer scope. Um, it, I really should have done that and I will not mess that up next time if I'm having a hard time making this set. And it might be in the case that in soft mud like that, we should always be anchoring with these type of anchors um, with higher scope than normal. And, and if you can't get the room to do that, uh, you need to use a different type of anchor or don't feel terribly confident in where you're anchoring. So I'm going to end it there, I think. I don't really think I have much more to add on that. Um, again, the the corrosion happening, especially like right here where the shackle rubs, um, and I, I, I'm a little concerned by that. Um, and if you really want a pretty anchor, which this anchor, when it came to me, was like wrapped in plastic, it was beautiful. I've now used it twice. And I can say that it is scratched to shit and, um, and it definitely has surface rust working on it too. 
So if you want to keep this thing like a gym, you're going to have to like not use it or which maybe is part of the idea with these stainless steel anchors or you're going to be polishing it a lot too. And I have a feeling the more and more you use this, obviously there's a polishing effect from the sand or mud that you're using, but all these little micro scratches I think are going to turn into areas that rust more easily too. And we're going to see, it's going to go back on the front of the boat. We'll see after a few weeks of, you know, bashing around and, and salt water rinsing it where if, you know, if the rust is going to get kind of out of hand. Um, I know there's a warranty with these that there's like a corrosion resistant warranty. I'm not quite sure how that all works because there's already some signs of corrosion happening on this already. But is, is it any pitting or anything like that? I don't think so. Like it's all surface. So, I mean, you just take a polishing wheel to it or even like some never dull and you could probably knock it right back to how it came. But um, don't be uh, don't be misled on if you want to keep these things rust free. It's there's probably gonna be a little bit of maintenance involved in it. The thing to be said too is that I I don't like Shannon hit it around the head when we finished that. She's like this is not very much fun. She's not having any fun doing this. Um, I'm doing this really as a as a uh, learning experience of trying to find a new primary anchor that we can afford. Uh, this is one of them. Um, and, but it, it takes a long time to do it. I give Steve a hell of a lot of credit, but he also has a better rig to do this too. He not only has the experience of doing it, but he has a much better boat and platform to do it with. You know, trying to do this without dropping any of these heavy, sharp things onto a brand, you know, a fairly new painted boat and it's fiberglass. You know, he has aluminum boats, which are a lot, a lot more rugged. Um, definitely he's the man to look at and I believe he is going to get one of these uh, to test and I, I can't wait to see how he does with it because he might have great results he might have very similar results I have no idea uh, I'm terribly um, I'm waiting anxiously to, to see that so we have we can at least kind of bounce things off of each other and say you know that that's very similar to what I'm experiencing that's not very similar to what I'm experiencing so um, that I'm, I'm hoping to see that from him soon, sooner or later. I know he has a lot of stuff going on and anchor testing is terribly time consuming. So, but he's definitely the guy to kind of keep an eye out for when it comes to these things. I hope you guys dig it as well. Um, uh, Prism reviews will be going full bore. And then also we have another thing called Prism projects that we're going to start up. So like always, fair winds and falling seas and I uh, hope you guys enjoy the new content. See you later.